My name is Sarah Rosalina Brady. Um, I'm an, a media artist based in Los Angeles. So a lot of the work that I do is, um, is based on uh, generative systems and um, using them um, kind of as like a hybrid practice. So I uh, use a lot of uh, computation and computers as a way of visualizing um, biological forms and um, uh, systems. So I ended up kind of creating these like techno hybrids. Um, so my background is actually in uh, film and I got into doing um, interactive audiovisual kind of pieces and uh, was brought um, to UCLA um, through Casey Race, who's the founder of Processing, um, to generate a lot of um, kind of like new uh, forms, um, uh, thinking more like in sculptural like terms and working uh, things just specifically for the screen. Um, I uh, used to live in the Bay Area and I had a lot of friends who were musicians um, at the time who went to Mills and had um, gone to Jurassic um, and spoke wonderful things about it and uh, always kind of kept that in the back of my mind. Um, and when, when I was at UCLA, um, a lot of my practice incorporated a lot of um, science. Um, and so that's kind of like how I've been kind of like thinking about um, kind of art and science. And then when I realized that not only did um, there was one at Jurassic, there's also one that was uh, working with Leonardo. I just couldn't help myself but to apply. <laughs> um, just before coming here, I actually did a laser and a show and um, was like always been um, very fascinated with Leonardo and what it stands for and um, received a fellowship through Sonia uh, Sheridan to come here, who has been very inspirational for me because she's such a pioneer for women working in computer art and she's uh, just been so lovely and we've been keeping in touch through my, uh, my stay here. And, it's been fantastic. It's in, uh, influenced my work uh, greatly. Um, a lot of my work and research is kind of like kind of combining them, but like both or multiple ones, like linguistic, mathematical, biological, and um, almost pushing them to the brink and seeing where they can transform and point to um, new poetic forms. Um, before coming here, I did a lot of work with um, a lot of like artificial life research, working with neural networks and particularly with language. Um, so that's something that I've been working quite a bit while I've been here. Um, so I've been uh, feeding a neural network um, 50,000 letters from world languages all over the world. and. Um, seeing what, um, pr what will happen when the computer ends up learning to write them over time. So it's been quite a process because the deeper and deeper I go, like the more and more intelligent the neural network is getting and it's creating these very interesting shapes, but they're a result of like artifacts. Um, and for me, I've been, a lot of my background is I'm First Nations, I'm Mexican. Um, and so I really think a lot of um, use my background and technology kind of as a way to like transform a lot of ideology and power relations. Um, so that's uh, one of the reasons why like I, I kind of like when I've been talking to Sonia using this kind of term like post-colonial computation um, as this way of um, using a tool that's been used um, throughout even with science that's been um, kind of used in this like biopolitical kind of way where it's been like giving power to like you know the military um, very like Eurocentric forms of um, communication. So that's been uh, something I've been like really working on making them more into like sculpture forms, but also um, kind of like these like emblems of like transformation. I, I definitely identify um, with this new kind of native renaissance that's happening. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with that there's a, a very strong ideological shift in America because I feel like, you know, with technology and communication, people are becoming much more aware. Um, and right now we're in a very uh, troubling time, especially and even for wildlife, indigenous wildlife, biodiversity. Um, so I feel like that reflects a lot of as America and who we are because it's also affecting our wildlife. Um, so it's uh, something I feel like a lot of people are much more in tune with and it's becoming much more uh, common and like common knowledge. Um, so the lot, uh, I've been working quite a bit on a lot of like new sculptural pieces and um, doing a lot of writing. 
I've uh, been really influenced by um, this book called Geoontologies by Elizabeth Povinelli, where she really goes in depth on power relations, basically across like the history of um, of like America and, and even the world. So she talks a lot about um, kind of like this political um, rationalization between um, like biological forms and how humans have kind of like t t used them for good and for bad. Um, so uh, I've been making forms informed by the work and doing a lot of writing about it. Um, also been really influenced by um, so much of the people here. Um, it's just been really great to meet a lot of people who also have a hybrid practice. Um, just because I do a variety of things. I'm, I'm trained as a musician, went to school for film, but my passion is pretty much in computer and computer science. My grandfather uh, was an astrophysicist uh, who worked on mission control for Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. So I think that's kind of like aided in my kind of like conscious of colonization. And now we're at a time where, you know, our, tri our president is saying that he's going to send military into space. We have uh, machines on Mars where, I wonder, where all of our artificial life research is being thrown at um, to look for minerals and resources, which we're probably going to be extracting at some point. So I feel there's a lot of mirroring between like um, being a, a hybrid person of like First Nations and have, knowing history of like what has happened in the past and like what is now going to be taking forth in the future. So, so being at Jurassi and uh, here for the Science Madness Delirium has really solidified my practice in art and science and making it uh, a very much of like a hybrid form. And I really feel like this is uh, going to be the future of the arts because uh, especially now uh, with uh, technology, um, people using art and technology on the rise. Um, I feel it's so important that younger people or people get more involved in seeing art as um, part of STEM or STEAM or uh, with humanities, um, which I feel is um, a huge part of this uh, of being here because it's such a international like uh, community. We have people from all different countries, ages, races, backgrounds, all kind of intermixing practices. Like everyone, I've helped people, you know, trying, you know, making ceramics for the first time or making a sculpture and, or I'd be like, you know, asking questions about chemistry or physics. So it's just been so fantastic. Um, I feel um, after leaving here, I'm, going to be continue working further in art and science um, and I have to admit it, being here it's been great because I've actually spent had time to really write and think about my work a little bit further um, and I've gotten a cup a few uh, calls to submit work while being here as well particularly in artificial life which I think is a sign <laughs> that I, once I leave, I'm going to be working more in generative systems and trying to pull in humanities and ideology, because um, in particularly with um, computers, because a lot of computer code and algorithms are inherently biased because they were created by the military, created by a, a lot of white men. It, there's a reason why code is written in English. So um, thinking about creating alternative realities through algorithms to provide um, kind of this like uh, oh gosh, um, backlash for a lot of inherent bias I think is really important.